Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on the Green Kitchen Standard. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's webinar. You have joined the presentation listening using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane on the control panel on the right hand side. You can send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end or afterwards via email. I would now like to introduce Liz from the Soil Association. Hi everyone and thanks so much for taking part in our Green Kitchen Standard webinar. I hope you find the information throughout the webinar useful for you today. So we've talked um, about the resource use um, in kitchens and the Green Kitchen Standard is a formula for exactly that, is reducing resources in the kitchen and therefore reducing costs in your kitchen. It's not just going to make them stay down just for a month or two, this is the way to keep it down forever. Um, so today I'm going to share with you um, about this special formula devised by the Soil Association and the Carbon Trust. Uh, but first of all, um, me, my name is Liz Harding Wyatt and I've worked with the Soil Association for the past 10 years. I work on many different projects in many different sectors and I'm here to tell you today about the Green Kitchen Standard. So, to give you an idea of who else is in the room, we've had a great amount of interest in the Green Kitchen Standard and from absolutely across the piece. Uh, we've got restaurant caterers, university caterers, um, sorry, department store caterers, school catering, some consultants, hospital catering as well, um, and even some hotels and high street restaurants and lots of other like-minded organisations um, and partnerships councils um, and national groups too. So I wanted to give you an idea about who the Green Kitchen Standard applies to. And that's that's all of you really, all catering. So the structure for today's webinar uh, will be an introduction to who the Soil Association and the Carbon Trust are. Why Green Kitchen Standard? Why do we need to reduce resources in the kitchen and how can we do that? Um, what the Green Kitchen Standard involves, the benefits, of all of um, the resource reduction that you do through the process of the Green Kitchen Standard. And then what other people think. Um, you may hear enough from me. Um, so I've invited Amy Johnston um, to talk about her Green Kitchen Standard journey for her organisation. Then the nitty gritty about the cost. Uh, and then we'll summarise and like we've mentioned, there'll be a chance for question and answers at the, say, at the end. So turn up your earphones, turn off your email notifications, and I'll get started. So the Soil Association is um, the UK's leading membership charity campaigning for healthy, humane, um, and sustainable food, farming, and land use. Uh, we started out as a single farm and then diversified into uh, certification, uh, not-for-profit, wholly owned subsidiary of the Soil Association. But we are now the largest organic certification body in the UK. We operate globally and we certify food, drink, food processors, farmers, growers, and now health and beauty and textiles has been more of a recent um, certification for us, as well as restaurant and catering businesses as well. So you can see our wealth of experience and our history there. One of our um, really successful certifications is our Food for Life Served Here Award, uh, previously called the Catering Mark. So you are able to get accreditation for bronze, silver and gold and move towards a climate friendly planet friendly menus, which is healthier for you and your customers. So for example, meat is farm assured, eggs are free range. Some ingredients may be organic and local as you move towards gold. So it's an independent award scheme that means that you guarantee the food on your menus meets certain standards. It means food is local, fresh, honest, cooked by chefs that really care about quality ingredients in a setting that takes your customers' health and well-being seriously. Food on the menu is freshly prepared, free from undesirable trans fats, additives, and use ingredients for, from sustainable and ethical sources. So this started in schools 
Um, and now over 10,000 of them serve meals to our standards. And you'll find served here in hospitals, universities, care homes, and workplaces and visitor attractions as well. So we're close to almost 1.7 million food um, served here meals per day. We've got universities and some real large national organizations like the RSPB, National Trust in Edinburgh Zoo, all looking for certification for the, their sustainable menus. And through our wealth of expertise, we also have a program especially for hospitals. So this will be um, creating bespoke pa packages for hospitals wanting support around their food and drink strategies, sequins and much more. Um, and if you want information on this, um, I can definitely uh, help you at the end. Um, now I'm going to hand over to Martin Hockaday. Um, he's our, the certification manager at the Carbon Trust to tell you um, about their expertise. Thank you, Liz. Uh, yes, Liz, could you go back a slide? Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so for those of you who don't know who we are, the Carbon Trust is an independent, mission-driven, uh, not-for-profit organization. That mission is to accelerate um, the move to a sustainable, low-carbon economy. Uh, now, the way that we do that uh, is in a number of different areas. First of all, we provide uh, advice. We advise businesses, public sector organization, governments around the world uh, in ways in which they can become more sustainable and reduce their carbon impacts. Uh, we also help to develop and deploy low carbon technologies and solutions uh, ranging from energy efficiency to renewable power. Uh, in addition to these, we provide assurance services. We measure and certify environmental footprints of organizations, products and services uh, through various means, including the Carbon Trust Standard, uh, which is in its 10th year now and still going strong, in addition to management system standards such as ISO 50001 for energy management, 14001 for environmental management. And it's this 10 years experience in certification and assurance and scheme development which led us to partnering with the Soil Association to develop the Green Kitchen Standard which has been based on uh, the experience that we've gained with our carbon trust standards, uh, which continue to be used in a wide range of organizations across the world. Uh, next slide now, Liz, thanks. The sectors that we work in are wide ranging, uh, but most relevant um, to the Green Kitchen Standard is our work in uh, food and drink sector, healthcare sector, hospitality and leisure sector. Uh, all relevant sectors uh, where the, the green kitchen standard may look to be applied. Um, and we look to develop and apply this experience um, in a technical capacity through the deployment of the green kitchen standard. So that's just a little bit about us and what we contribute to the Green Kitchen Standard in our partnership with the Soil Association. Uh, now back to you, Liz. Great, thanks, Martin. Um, it's great to have an insight to the Carbon Trust, so thank you for that. So we'll be talking about the benefits of the Green Kitchen Standard as, as we go through the webinar and how to reduce costs in the kitchen. So you've heard about the Soil Association and, and the Carbon Trust. Well, what is the Green Kitchen Standard? So it is a standard designed to recognize caterers that are taking positive steps to, to sustainably manage their energy, water and waste, as well as support you with making those changes. It's a trusted independent certification for the environmental management of food outlets. So we have caterers that strive for the cage, uh, green kitchen standard to show off their environmental management credentials, or we have some that are at the beginning of their journey and they take up the award to help improve on where they are with their environmental management. It complements the served here award as it adds a new energy, water and waste dimension to take the caterer further than ever. The standard was launched in May 2017 with four pilot holders, um, a university and three hospitals. And since the pilot, we've had more sites um, join and more to come again so that's great news 
Um, we've even now just accredited our first school caterer, Caterlink Islington, um, to, and that's a great example to show how the Green Kitchen Standard can be applied across um, many sites. So this is what I'll be talking with you in detail today. Um, and a quick quote, um, this partnership between the Sword Association Certification and the Carbon Trust is an exciting opportunity to inspire business and caterers to improve environmental performance. So this is where the idea for the Green Kitchen came from, was from Dr. Peter Bonfield, who created DEFRA's Balanced Scorecard. He had the idea of a standard such as this, looking at energy, water and waste. Served here, Food for Life Award made some connections with the scorecard, but Dr. Peter Bonfield wanted it to go a step further, not just be sustainable menus, but sustainable kitchens. And the idea um, for the Sword Association and Carbon Trust was to work together to create the standard. And actually, the Green Kitchen Standard does more than just meet the balanced scorecard. Um, it supports you to reduce resource use in the kitchen and save money as well. So why is um, kitchen sustainability so important? So here's a bit of a background on why we need the kitchen standard and reduce our resources in the kitchen. So not only does it have less impact on the environment, resources are really expensive. Um, reducing the resources we use not only helps the environment, but will help your margins. So 30% of the UK's CO2 emissions come from food production and distribution. And on average, energy costs make up almost a quarter of overheads for the restaurant and catering industry. So how can we keep consumption down, um, which in turn keep our costs down? Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. Firstly, water. So it's difficult to imagine a ton of energy or electricity, but water may be a bit easier. So a cubic meter is a thousand liters of water, is 33 domestic dishwasher loads. But it's not just the water itself, it's the pumping, heating, cooling, which all adds to the water bill. So any reductions you can make will save money. And then food waste. The cost of food wasted in the UK from the UK and hospitality food sector was estimated to three billion per year in 2016. 18% of all food purchased in the sector being wasted, costing an average of £10,000 each year for each outlet. Can you imagine buying in, you know, your um, delivery that comes in straight off the lorry and then putting 18% directly straight in the bin? That is essentially what food waste is. So it makes good business sense to be more resource efficient. And if you're looking to make 80% margins on the items on your menu, 10 and 15% of margins you, you can possibly control. And with a bit of sense, you can reduce them a bit more. So we'll talk about switch on, switch off policies later. Um, energy efficiency, lights and LEDs, keeping facilities well maintained, leaky taps, making sure you address that um, and working with your water provider to save you money. Um, RAP, um, also the organisation, have some great resources as part of your business's food initiative and I'll signpost you to those resources later in the webinar. And it's not just RAP. Going through the process of gaining the Green Kitchen Standard will support you in reducing your resource costs. So the Green Kitchen Standard. So if you've been listening so far and thought, do you know what? Well, we do a lot of this already. Um, then the Green Kitchen Standard is a great way to show off your existing good practice. And if you've been listening and think, oh, you know what I could do with some help, then this is your answer as well. It's a flexible questionnaire-based standard, which requires a 60% pass. And the flexibility means that you can focus on areas of your strength. All catering operations are different. As I mentioned, all the different um, webinar attendees today um, from absolutely a, a, across the sector. Um, and so the Green Kitchen Standard has been designed to be flexible and to only assess those areas that you have control over. So if you are a school caterer working in schools where you don't own the buildings and you don't own the equipment, the flexibility of the standard will support you with making changes where you can. There are some mandatory standards around energy, water and waste policies, recycling for staff and customers, tap water available and promoted, um, and a food waste minimisation plan. But the rest of the standard is flexible around you. So as you work through the standard, you can see what may need to be implemented in your business to become more resource efficient. So it's not just 
about gaining the certification is giving you lots of ideas on what steps you can make in the longer term to become more resource efficient. So this would be the beginning to your sustainability journey. So it's split into mainly eight sections. Um, the eighth is a site visit, so we'll concentrate on the first seven. And all of these will support you to save resources in the kitchen. It help become part of your everyday life rather than just some new project that may get dropped in a few months time. This will be sustainable uh, resource cutting. So attacking the resource use from all different directions is what will be the most effective and what the Green Kitchen Standard is designed to help you with. So first of all, management and policies. Having policies, procedures and members of staff to look after them will create consistency across decision making and make sure that energy, water and waste is considered wherever possible. Having a staff, uh, having policy for staff and managers to apply and update means be best practice will be followed. They need to be reviewed regularly and owned by members of the team. So have a think, do you have energy, water and waste policies? Are your senior management team on board with sustainability? Um, they might be quite easy to draw up, but will really become the foundations for all of your sustainability and resource use to come. Communications is the second part um, with staff and customers communicating regularly with them about your environmental policies, initiatives, targets for energy, water and waste. And this could be through training, newsletters, staff meetings, email bulletins. And this supports one of your most valuable resources, your staff, so they understand all the changes and be right behind them. And now, what do you communicate with staff? Do you have newsletters and team meetings? All our organizations seem to, that's, that's what makes them better. So it should be really straightforward to include any energy, water and waste into existing comms to really drive home the resource, um, the message of reducing resource use. Monitoring. Monitoring energy, water and uh, food waste will help your catering operation score points towards your green kitchen standard. Do you know how much energy or water you use in the kitchen in a typical day? Once you know what you use and when, you can then start making improvements. So if you don't own your buildings and equipment and aren't able to sub-meter, use other methods to monitor your resource use. Um, Submeters are the most accurate, but um, there are other ways as well. Imagine if you could turn your equipment on an hour later and turn it off an hour earlier. Two hours a day quickly escalates um, into a lot of hours over the year and then a lot of um, resource and cost saving as well. So targets follow on from monitoring. Once you know what you use, then build in some, some realistic and bespoke targets on how to um, reduce your resources. Set meaningful targets for your energy and your water and your food waste and ensure that they're being met. A food waste minimization plan will help your food waste side of things. And that's part of the Green Kitchen Standard, which we really recommend. And we can support you with developing these plans as well if needs be. Staff training, again, um, staff are a valuable resource. And training on energy, water and waste, on induction, and through refresher training will really help make staff understand practices and understand why we, those practices are in place. And I'm sure you train your staff. It's very likely you're doing health and safety or food safety training quite regularly. Adding in resource efficiencies into these training um, sessions should be an easy option. So it would really give staff confidence and knowledge to be able to reduce their use, get them on board. Like I say, they're a valuable resource. Your operations, so in this section, you can score um, points for lots of posit positive actions. So free drinking water, no pre-bottled water on hospitality menus, recycling facilities for staff and customers, energy and water champions, switch off policies, maintenance of equipment. Um, and throughout this section, this will give you lots of good ideas and initiatives that you could try to help build up um, building blocks for points for the Green Kitchen Standards and further reduce your resource use. Then the procurement, the products that you're using. So compliance with a balanced scorecard um, is taken into account. 
in this section. Um, so this would be for your catering equipment and paper products. Making sure environmentally friendly packaging is used, environmentally friendly transport of food, um, preferential sourcing from suppliers with good environmental practices. So for example, if you're able to send packaging back or work with products to come in reduced packaging or recycled packaging, that kind of thing will all help. And then the site visit, which will be the last part of, uh, or almost the last part of the Green Kitchen Standard. So evidencing that your environmental policies and procedures really translate through to the site level so that your staff are aware of policies and where to find protocols on energy, water and waste, that equipment is clean, working well and set to correct temperatures and that all the documentation you've submitted is, is verified at that point. Um, seeing those practices in place, how you um, segregate your food waste, how you recycle, all of those things will be taken into consideration. So the Green Kitchen Standard is building blocks, lots of different ideas on how to reduce your resource use in the kitchen, but it's flexible and designed to assess those areas that you have control over. And here's some ideas about what you can build to create your own Green Kitchen Standard. So the Green Kitchen Standard will support you with those resource efficiencies. It will save you money and from attacking your energy, water and waste from more than one angle um, is the way forward. And gaining the Green Kitchen Standard will really support you with making those changes. So apply for the standard and this will be the process that follows. There will be some benchmarking with our experienced staff to give you an idea of what you're doing already what information you need to find out and what you need to do next. Um, you will have an independent expert assessor who will um, review all of the information submitted. You have the site visit as well. And once all of that information has been collated, you will get the expert recommendations and report from the Carbon Trust to give you an idea of your strengths, your weaknesses and your next steps as you progress. So if you achieve 60% in the first year, we'll help you achieve higher in the second year and higher in the third year. So it really is um, moving your organization forward. And you also get marketing suite access. So from use of the logo, um, from use of the Sword Association, um, Facebook, Twitter and social media accounts, press releases and such to really make an impact um, and create a real ripple effect from you achieving the Green Kitchen Standard. I think recently with our uh, with Caterlink achieving uh, the Green Kitchen Standard, we had um, 10 to 15 online articles um, about them, their achievements, which is absolutely fantastic. So why get the Green Kitchen Standard? So I've touched on some benefits as we've gone through around the, uh, the cost reduction and resource reduction, um, but a couple more. Um, you'd definitely be a pioneer of the catering industry and get to work with two of the biggest experts in the field, the Soil Association and the Carbon Trust. You get the bespoke marketing support and it's the third party independent certification. So this is no greenwash, this is no invalid um, green claims. This is exactly what it is and it's been independently verified. And of course, there'll be um, links with the balance scorecard um, and the plan for public procurement as well. With some more benefits as, um, as we go on, it will demonstrate that you've got good environmental management um, and receive recognition. The expert feedback will really help you with the continuous improvement. So it's not just a an, uh, an annual renewal, just going through the motions. Hopefully this will really make changes in your organization. Should make links between your sustainability and catering teams that have never happened before and create other efficiencies. You really will be set apart um, in your contracts and tenders, It help you retain the customers that you do have and opt for more as well. And it's a really easy way to engage staff promoting your practices within your staff and with your customers as well. So you've probably heard enough about me uh, and what the Green Kitchen Standard can do from you for you. 
Um, but how about we um, have another speaker hear about what it's felt like to go through the Green Kitchen Standard. So I'd like to welcome Amy Johnston from Freeman Hospital. Um, she was one of our pioneers within the Green Kitchen Standard um, and have had it almost for a year now. Um, and she's gonna tell you a bit more information about her, her background in the hospital um, she works at, why she's opted for the Green Kitchen Standard, changes they've made and, and the benefits that they have felt on their personal level. So. Amy, welcome. Thank you for coming, um, and we'd love to hear your story. Thanks, Liz. Um, hello, everyone. As Liz said, my name is uh, Amy Johnston, and I am the Assistant Environmental Officer for the Newcastle upon Tyne Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. Um, Newcastle Hospitals is one of the largest acute teaching hospitals um, in the UK, with a right, wider range of specialist services than any other. We're located in the northeast of England with three main hospitals and a number of community sites. We work with um, around 1.4 million patient contacts a year and have over 13,000 staff. So we know that we have a significant impact on the environment as well as the potential to positively influence many people on sustainability. We achieved the Green Kitchen Standard at one of our hospitals last year. Um, the Freeman Hospital has around 800 beds 33 wards, um, an on-site restaurant, um, and serves an off-site cafe for about 500 trust staff in a nearby office. Um, with just over 100 catering staff, we have an in-house cook and serve plated meal service to patients, which has achieved, achieved silver in the food for life, um, sorry, the food served here standard. Um, Newcastle Hospitals is committed to delivering sustainable healthcare services and has a track record of seeking innovative solutions to reducing our environmental impact. One example of this passion for sustainability is demonstrated by Jeff Moyle, our catering manager. Um, improving the sustainability of the catering department at Freeman has been a long running project spearheaded by Jeff out of a genuine desire to improve the quality and the sustainability of the food provided for staff, visitors and patients at the Trust. This has included the introduction of two anaerobic digesters for plate waste, which has saved over three Olympic-sized swimming pools worth of water annually versus the macerators they replaced. And the catering department has led the way for recycling as they were the first to introduce compactors for their recyclable waste at the Freeman Hospital. The new Green Kitchen Standard provided the opportunity to concentrate the great efforts that Jeff had been doing to pull together a cohesive plan to improve the wider sustainability of the department in conjunction with the sustainability team and with clear actions for continual improvement. Um, we also wanted to save money and get recognition for our achievements as well. As a pilot site, not only were we one of the first hospital catering departments to achieve it, um, but we've been able to shape the way the standard is delivered to other catering facilities for the future, um, which was great, a great opportunity. Through the standard, we have improved communications of environmental initiatives and performance through a variety of means, such as posters, graphs, and information on a notice board prominently displayed in the entrance to the restaurant. Um, also posters and information by features, such as the free water fountain and the reusable takeaway containers. Um, we've delivered training to all catering staff, you know, including the cleaners, the servers, and the chefs. Um, we've included information on sustainable catering in the local induction materials that's given to all starters um, as well. Um, last year, we created our first ever programme of engagement for the catering department, which ties into the sustainable development management plan for the hospital and the sustainability team's engagement plan. Um, the training we provided to staff um, informed them of their responsibilities with regards to waste, water and energy and how they could report any issues they see. Um, engaged staff can help reduce the amount of wastage as they feel empowered to make a change and are aware of the behaviours to avoid, to avoid no common areas of wastage that occur in the kitchen and can watch out for these in the future. We've also changed some of our disposables to more sustainable materials, which was partially driven by the standard but to be honest, this was majorly driven by our customers. Staff have been incredibly vocal um, recently about disposable coffee cups and plastic straws in particular, 
following the increased media attention um, and Blue Planet too. So we're glad we're, we're doing this to be able to say to customers, go back and go, we are working to improve the sustainability of the catering department. We hear you, we understand that it's important. Um, so to build on the work we've already done as we go for re-accreditation, we're now also looking to improve monitoring by introducing a handheld system for food ordering to reduce food waste and introducing better metering. Um, we're about to refurbish our restaurant, which includes the replacement of refrigeration displays, the more efficient models, and look sensitive lights that will take advantage of the natural light from the large windows and conservatory area um, to reduce that energy usage. We're also looking to implement the changes that we've seen at the Freeman Hospital to our other main hospital site, the Royal Victoria Infirmary, as Jeff has recently been made manager of both sites. Um, some additional benefits of achieving this standard for us have been the number of awards we've won this year for our sustainable catering practice. As one of the reasons we were wanting to achieve the standard was to get recognition of our achievement. And this has been majorly successful and has helped improve the reputation um, of the hospital and the hospital catering. Yeah, uh, so that, that's it for me, but I'm happy to take any questions uh, at the end. Fantastic, Amy, thank you so much. It really puts it into perspective. You know, a hospital is such a lo large organisation, has a real responsibility to, to help educate and support um, its members that, that really want this sustainability drive as well. Blue Planet has definitely been an influencer, um, so riding on the back of that is, is a great way to, to engage staff. And to put it into perspective, three Olympic-sized swimming pools of water being saved, um, you know, that is that's a fantastic kind of way to visualise your savings. So, so thank you so much. Um, like Amy says, you know, the Green Kitchen Stand helps create the plan, give you actions, and gives you the recognition and, and cost saving as well. So thank you, Amy. So um, it's not just Amy um, who's quite enjoyed um, and done well with the Green Kitchen Standard. Um, we've got Sheffield Teaching Hospital and Edge Hill University as well. Um, those caterers with Food for Life served here wanting even more um, focusing on their sustainability. So a couple of quotes from Emma and Kevin for you there. And then from um, Nigel Farron from Caterlink as well, really proud of their Green Kitchen Standard as it reflects their ethos as a whole and all of their hard work too. And here's some other um, pointers for resources. Like I mentioned, RAP, Your Business's Food, has some great calculators um, and resources to help you get started. The Carbon Trust also have some good uh, resources and tools as well. And also the Sword Association um, doing a benchmarking with us to see where you are. So the nitty gritty, um, a license for the Green Kitchen Standard will be 2,500 plus VAT. And then if it's more than one site that you have, it's, there'll be a multi-site fee as well. But for webinar participants, we've got special discount for you. Um, so that's 10% off if you apply before the 1st of April. So the Green Kitchen Standards can support you with your journey as well as just reward you for it. Do the benefits outweigh the costs? Um, most likely. Um, but an urgent call to caterers. So you've got all the information about the Green Kitchen Standard now and how the Sword Association and the Carbon Trust can support you. But now we need you. Um, an urgent call to caterers. As the Green Kitchen Standard is newly launched, we are looking for firsts. We're looking for firsts in new sectors and new regions, and each we're really keen to shout about, make a press splash about your achievements. So could this be you? Like I mentioned, our benchmarking services in a bit more detail, where you've got personalized in-person support, looking at the Green Kitchen Standard and how it links with your organization, what you need to do now before you apply, what you need to do after, um, what information you may need to gather to create a real firm action plan that you can take to the rest of your team and know exactly what needs doing, exactly when. A real help um, to engage your staff and get special access to the standards in advance. So again, contact us if that's something that you're, you're really keen to hear more about. 
So in summary, um, the Sword Association and Carbon Trust have this special formula to help you reduce your resource use and your resource costs in the kitchen. This is the Green Kitchen Standard. So we're here to shout about it and tell you all about it. The certification um, is through a flexible questionnaire based standard and the certification means there is no greenwashing, it's true. Um, you have an independent org, uh, audit, recognition for all of your hard work, expert feedback, continual improvements, marketing support. It will really set you apart from the rest and of course save you those costs and resources as well. Um, Thank you to Amy to hearing about your journey and become a first. We want to see you with the Green Kitchen Standard logo. And I want to leave you with a quote. So no organization wants to waste energy and resources, but we've seen again and again that in practice, there can be a big gap between intentions and behavior. That's why I believe it's so important to have an objective system to track performance and drive improvements that's independently verified by a third party. And we hope the Green Kitchen Standard will help caterers become more sustainable by recognising and rewarding good environmental management. And here are my contact details. Um, you can see us online. We will be recording this webinar as well, so you can see it again and we'll send you the link. If anyone is um, at the Low Carbon Cities event on Thursday, um, please do come and meet me. I'll be there as well as Carbon Trust colleagues as well. So happy to talk about it. Or drop me an email, give me a call. Um, if you want to hear more. So thank you very much um, for listening. It's been great to have you. And I believe now we're looking to move on to questions. Great, thank you Liz for that overview. Um, so as she mentioned, we're now going to begin answering questions submitted during today's presentation. Um, as a reminder, you can still submit questions through the questions pane on the right hand side in your control panel. Um, so answering the questions, we're going to have Liz, um, who just did the presentation from the Soil Association. We've got Martin from the Carbon Trust um, and Amy, who was our case study, is also open to asking, uh, answering any questions. Um, so to begin, um, we've got a question come in, can a delivery only service, so with no retail shops, apply to the Green Kitchen standard? Yes, well, the food would be generated in a kitchen, I would assume. Um, it may not be retailed or in, immediately served within a restaurant, so I imagine uh, food will be produced within a kitchen and it will be delivered out to different sites, be it schools or um, workplaces. Um, we've got something very similar now with the Sheffield Teaching Hospitals, so their food is created in a central production unit on site and then delivered across the hospitals with environmental transport. So yes, um, delivery only, um, as long as there's a kitchen there creating the food, um, then that's definitely something that we're able to, to apply. Great, thank you. Um, so one's come in, we aren't able to submeter our kitchens. Can you tell, tell us what other options we have? So submetering is obviously the best route, but in a lot of cases it's not possible, maybe cost or that you just don't own the building or not able to have that agreement with the host building. And that's absolutely fine. Um, so with water, it could be finding out initially what, if, uh, what amounts that you use. Um, it could be a start to measure dishwasher loads. So if you have on average 10 a day and then suddenly there's 20, you might be able to identify a training issue, equipment flaw or, or a busy day. Um, so you know that kind of what you're using with water. And similarly with energy, making sure the training of your staff is, is there, perhaps some checklists, making sure equipment um, is turned on only when it's needed. There'd be switch on, switch off policies, equipment is off when it's not needed. Um, a series of commitments really that's signed off every day to make sure at least the minimum, um, if you're not able to monitor and measure exactly what's being used, you're able to make sure that the minimum is being used. Um, so that's some ideas to give you a reason why. Um, it's not a barrier to the Green Kitchen Standard in any way if you're not able to monitor. Um, this is where the flexibility of the standard really kicks in. So it will help and it will help you gain more points if you are, but if not, that's absolutely fine. So hopefully that helps there. Uh, does the Green Kitchen Standard apply in the UK only? 
Um, that's a great question. That's where we're starting at the moment, just as we're just coming out of the pilot phase. But I'm sure that we'd be open to it being um, global. Um, our soil association inspectors currently um, uh, are based all over the world and we're able to inspect in different countries and relationships with different certification bodies as I'm sure the Carbon Trust have certifications across the world as well. So um, that's something we'd be really keen to hear more about and, and go forward with. Um, otherwise, uh, but mainly we've been working in the UK so far. Okay, great, thank you. And what are the timelines for certification? So this is totally down to you as an organisation. So um, if you are really keen and got lots of information together, it can be quite a quick process. Um, so as soon as you apply, you'll be sent an assessment tool where you submit all of the information and evidence that we require. That will be reviewed uh, by our certification team. So that may take about two weeks. And if all is looking that you're looking to hit the 60%, we'll look to organise the site visit. So we don't have access to inspectors' diaries, but that may be around four weeks to um, organise and we'll give you time to prepare for that visit as well. We'll tell you where and when we'll be visiting. There'll be no surprises there. And then very Great. quite quickly Sorry. afterwards. Um, are you el eligible for a pre-visit? Yes. Um, if we can reach you, um, at not too much of a cost, um, then we can do pre-visits. Um, what has been proving quite successful is a couple of um, benchmarking phone calls to begin with to get you um, and your teams and other colleagues um, uh, kind of linked in with um, the Green Kitchen Standard and what's required. And then a visit, yes, that's part of the application would be a, a pre-application visit, so no problem. Great, thank you. Uh, so this question's come in from Janet. Um, is the industry looking to move away from plastic bottles and canned drinks? Um, and if so, what are the alternatives? So I think people are becoming more aware about the sugary drinks as well as the plastic, thanks to Blue Planet. Um, I know lots of um, universities are looking to provide students with their own water bottle, so they're able to refill uh, water bottles. That's a lot cheaper for students as well um, on buying, a, you know, a couple of bo bottles of water a day. Um, so that seems to be quite a quite a good alternative. Um, so hopefully that might give you some ideas. Um, the universities seem to be at the forefront of these ideas, um, and that's um, and that's something that I think um, will become bigger and bigger as we go. Okay. And how do you audit and certify national organisations? So if you're looking to um, accredit more than one site, it will be very similar to how we do our Food for Life accreditation. Um, we will see your application with all of the information from the sites that you wish um, to have certified, and then we will visit one. Um, in the first uh, year, it's likely that it'll be a site that we uh, both agree on that you would like to put forward. And then later on, we are on each year, create a um, bit of a, a rotation of sites. Um, they can be based all over the country. That's absolutely no problem for us or our inspectors. Um, and with national organisations, you should have the policies in place the procedures in each of the kitchens uh, across your contracts or um, across the, the country are all very similar. Staff are trained in a very similar way. Communications will be the same. So all of those ideas will be um, replicated across all of your sites and then we'll visit one in the first year. If it does seem to be a lot of sites, we may suggest a second, uh, but we'll see how it goes with that, uh, on application. So hopefully that answers your question. Great, thank you. And um, this is a question we had uh, in very early. Um, how can I make induction cooking economically viable for clients when the unit rate of electricity is so much higher than gas? Okay, uh, so this could be um, a question for you, Martin, at the Carbon Trust. Um, I suppose from our point of view, it would be a case of using it um, at the right settings, the right temperatures only using it when required uh, uh, and such like to keep um, use as, as minimal as possible. Martin, do you have anything to add for that question? Um, yeah, so yeah, as you've said, um, good operational control practices uh, of your cooking processes 
practices uh, are a good way of minimizing the cost. These practices um, will apply equally, whether it's an induction cooker or, or a gas cooker. If you are looking purely at costs, um, yeah, L L yeah, induction cookers are, in terms of kilowatt hours, that they are more efficient. Electricity is more expensive than gas. Uh, in addition, from a carbon point of view, um, electricity from grid has a higher carbon footprint uh, per kilowatt hour than um, gas does. Um, so there are savings in terms of both carbon and um, pounds and pence if you're using gas over induction. Um, the one thing you could potentially look at is if you want your um, use of electricity from an induction cooker um, to cost less, essentially you need to get cheaper electricity. Um, one way to potentially do that is to generate it, generate it yourself. Um, through installation of uh, solar photovoltaics, uh, for example. That could be um, an option if, if you're a large electricity consumer. Um, generate it yourself. I uh, hope that helps. Thank you. We've had one more question come in. Um, do you have advice on more fuel efficient kitchen equipment? So the Green Kitchen Standard is to give you ideas on um, how to move forward and change and adapt and become more energy efficient and to give you the structure and framework for that. Um, but within each of that, I suppose we've given the um, onus to organisations to research and look into a lot of their own equipment. However, Martin at the Carbon Trust, um, is there any support that the Carbon Trust can give with um, uh, kitchen equipment? Uh, we could potentially provide uh, advice uh, on that. Um, we do have um, you know, the capacity to do so. Um, what you may want to look out for is equipment that has been um, certified in some capacity. Um, you know, it's it's got uh, an energy efficiency rating, for example. Um, that that's one thing to, to look out for, definitely. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so that's all the questions we have had in today. Um, also, we've just had one more. I think we've got time to do this one. Um, what I can do with any question is is to answer them by email or give anyone a call after the webinar if you're, you're worried about time um, to make sure that we can start a conversation because it may be more than one question. So I'll follow up everyone that's asked a question and see if I can help a little more. Perfect. Thanks, Liz. Um, so we will end the webinar now. So thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. Um, on behalf of the Soil Association, the Carbon Trust and our presenters, thank you for joining us Day. Enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, Liz's contact details are up on the screen. Um, as she said, please send her an email um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.